Arasti, Romania, 1992. The villagers rarely ventured far beyond their doors after dark. Only the very bravest among them would dare do so. From time to time, some of the men would return from hunting in the nearby forests or fishing in the streams and isolated waterways, just as the sun made its regular pilgrimage to plunge the world into darkness. On a hill leading out of the village was a cemetery, incredibly old. I found it strange that standing at the entrance I would delight at the charm of the place and at the same time be taken by a sense of dread, the likes of which I had never experienced. As I meandered through the graveyard I tried desperately to alleviate the sense of apprehension that had taken hold of me. I would stop here and there and read the inscriptions, translating into English in my head as best I could the sentiments of the loved ones who had prescribed them. I actually heard the sound of water splashing before I saw the fountain. Then, moments later, she appeared, wraith-like at first, but then more tangible. The sight of her disgusted me, and at the same time drew me wildly. Though she was indeed a vile visage, I could sense her projecting images of wanton desire. And it is true that as I stood there transfixed, she uttered these words. Can you love me? She had a frightening animal quality about her, and in truth, there were moments when parts of her seemed almost transparent. I remembered that the Archbishop had spoken of such creatures, which exist in anti-time, a state of trans-dimensional flux. She made a move forward, and I reached inside my jacket for an Ethiopian crucifix that had been recently liberated from a Syrian smuggler. But that's another story. Her eyes widened and flared as she shrieked at me in Latin, Ego te provoco, which is to say, I dare you. I took it as a challenge, and on the part of the creature, an admission of fear and apprehension. Somehow this brokered a subtle smile from me, and at the sight of this, the dead thing evidenced a seething anger that radiated into rage. It spat out more Latin, translated as, Your timid Nazarene is weak and powerless to help you. She moved forward again as I withdrew the amulet. The creature continued to rage at me in Latin, and I will translate it as, The self-important fool in his arrogance thought that he could save your wretched kind. And how did his god reward him? with a shameful death hanging naked in the sun like the worthless magician that he was. And then I moved forward. As I moved forward, the thing recoiled and spat out a horrible reptilian hiss. Her shoulders and back seemed to arch in a hideous, contorted display. She backed herself against the stone of the fountain and displayed the most horrid, feral set of teeth imaginable. Aside from two spike-like incisors, her mouth was studded with what could only be described as two rows of shark-like teeth. As I moved closer to the thing, the fear in its eyes became evident. Backed against the stone of the fountain, it attempted, in a lizard-like manner, to climb the structure. I then uttered these words. I am a servant of Ra and of Athena. I am a son of the earth. By the blood of the Nazarene, you are banished forever from the soil of the earth. Your feet may not trod upon this world again. At this, her form became more and more distorted, as if she could not maintain cohesion. She seemed to melt into the stonework and then into nothing. As she did so, there was one last wrenching scream of spite and resignation. In exhaust and terror, I fell to one knee and was only barely able to maintain consciousness. My next memory is of the morning sun's light spraying into my eyes. I awoke to the sound of the splashing water of the fountain and the scent of earth, grass, and to my delight, the scent of very strong coffee wafting down from the village. <laughs>